Welcome, everybody. My name is Mateusz. I'm the founder of Lokebini. Lokebini is a Swiss startup. It is a platform connecting locals with travelers via shared experiences. And in our everyday job, we actually work with travel agencies. So this allowed us to actually conduct some empirical research in our collaboration with the travel agencies. And this is why today, this is why today I will be speaking about how travel agencies can, be, can, can become attractive again. Oops. Sorry for that. All right. So what is the current market situation? Um, there are a lot of new entrants in the market. We have obviously Booking, Expedia, Airbnb. They have a lot of big plans, as you know. And then obviously we have the new technologies coming in, right? Uh, we have algorithms, pricing algorithms. Everything gets more complex. Uh, there are algorithms to you know, detect what are the preferences of each single user in the in on the internet to customize potential offerings to, to, to them. So, well, all of this actually has led over the last, let's say, 10 to 12 years to a consolidation in the travel agency industry. And then we can ask ourselves, so what? Something is happening here. I'm really sorry for that. All right. So, well, there is a pricing competition and commission pressure for every travel agent. And throughout this presentation, we're going to talk about potential remedies on what travel agents could actually do to increase their margins. And when we created the presentation, we were thinking about a nice structure. So actually, right now, for the purpose of this presentation, we have modeled two different types of travel agencies. Travel agency type number one, they, they have excellent service, they deliver quality, they have high volumes, they are profitable, but still they would be happy to increase their revenues per transaction. And then we have travel agency type two. They also have the quality, they also deliver good service. Obviously for them it would be also nice to increase their revenues per transaction, but they would also be very happy to increase their customer base. So those are the two different type of travel agencies. And we're going to discuss the different remedies and potential, well, solutions, low-hanging fruit solution for those two types. And obviously, we have to see everything from the customer point of view. Hence, oh, sorry. One bag, please. One bag, yes. So a friend of mine from St. Gallen, he created this graphics. Um, this is a customer journey. It's super confusing, and it starts at the dreaming phase. It goes clockwise. And usually people, when they are, well, sometimes over the, over the weekend, you think, oh, where could I travel? What could I do? So there is a dreaming phase. Like, you're thinking, what could I do? You get inspired by friends. Maybe something you saw something on Instagram. Maybe you saw something on Facebook or uh, Pinterest, whatever. And uh, the second stage is the researching. So you thought, oh, that, that's interesting. So now you're going to research because you want to have more information. You want to inform yourself, right? Um, then the next stage, and usually during the research phase, if it's something complex, then you're like, oh, well, maybe I should ask for an expert for advice. But if it is something where you think, oh, I can do it myself, then probably the third stage, which is the booking stage, you probably do it yourself. After the booking stage, there is this experience stage. So this is the stage where you actually, at the destination, you're experiencing your, your service. And then at the end, there is the last stage, which is the sharing stage. And the sharing stage is basically you are happy, you tell your friends, you post pictures on, on social media, and basically that's how you know, it spreads, spreads to the world. Next slide, please. So, and here we have it in a more clearer way, one could say, the five stages. So it's the awareness stage, the consideration, so this is the researching, purchase, service, experience, and the loyalty, right? Now, in the past, for the travel agents, it was super simple, because in the past, almost everything was offline. You created a beautiful catalog, beautiful pictures, 
people went to you for advice. And right now, there's an absolutely new element, which is basically everything what's available online. So people get inspired, as I said, on social media. So right now, we, we all know travel agency business is a people's business. That's clear, right? So right now, we also need to build up a community. We, ha we also need to build a relationship with the people who are, you know, using, you know, reading blogs, third-party websites. So a travel agent has to go a bit beyond right now. And we're going to talk what are the potential um, low-hanging low fruit solutions for that. Next slide, please. Okay. So for travel agent category type one, so this is the profitable travel agency, but they would be very happy to increase their revenues per share. Uh, not per share, sorry, uh, per transaction. <laughs> um, and this is the recommendation, basically. It would be very simple for the travel agency to add some really nice and interesting services for the client at where, where they're going to travel. So it could be unique experiences. It could also be a very nice travel app in a white label solution. So the logo of the travel agency is on there, where you can uh, have all the details about your about your um, flight, hotel, but also things to do, uh, restaurants to eat, museums to see, or even to book local activities, right? So those apps are existing. They're in a white label form, and it's really nice for the, for the client. So as I said, because I know it's all travel agents, they are super busy, so it's always about like what, what, are, what are the low-hanging fruits, and offering unique extras, upselling those is a good way. Next slide, please. So. For travel agency type two, this is the travel agency that has two objectives, increase client base and increase revenues per transaction. So here, well, it's the same thing as for travel agency type number one, but here, so this travel agent, they want to increase their client base. So how could they do it? They should be part of this dreaming and researching phase of the, of the potential clients, because this is how the, the potential clients are, well, going to get awareness about this travel agent, that they have the expertise, that they know actually it's quite complex, and their travel agency solves this complexity, right? So how could you do it? Um, well, it's content. Investing a little bit into content, uh, posting articles on a blog, could be a WordPress uh, blog, could be also a, a landing page for a specific um, category of um, of, well, of a destination. I mean, there are so different landing pages like Unbounce, etc. It's super cheap. Within half a day, you have it created, right? So you can really do a lot of nice things. But also, a regular news newsletter would do it. A regular newsletter would do it. Um, I, I open newsletters from, I actually open them, and I sometimes read them as well, right? Because if it's something relevant, then I read it. So here, the goal is that potential new clients perceive the travel agency as credible, as the expert, and solving basically all the issues the client might have. So if we would sum up, next slide, please. There were recommendations. Um, for travel agency type one, who wants to increase the revenue spread transaction, you continue on delivering the service, the quality, but you add some extras extra services to the client so they, they really appreciate and they think, wow, because of you, I'm having a really unique experience. Then for type two, it's the same as for type one, but then here you, say you have to still, you, you need to educate the people that actually it's complex if you want to uh, uh, book a whole trip through Portugal, you need to arrange transport, everything has to be well coordinated. So it's, it, yeah, well, you need to communicate clearly, basically, and this is, basically done through, you can do, uh, well, you, you could potentially do Facebook, Facebook posts, you can uh, go on a blog, you can create a blog, you can post on blog, uh, you can even, m influencers, I'm not sure, you could use obviously bloggers, could work, I mean, we as, as our, I mean, our startup, we have all right experience with, with influencers, but I mean, it depends always on the industry. Okay, so next slide. Because now it's all, it all goes back to the client. What do the clients want? A, save time. That's why they go to you. Second thing, they want to have a positive experience. That means that you actually think for them. If they have to go from A to Z in Portugal because of whatever, that actually the transport is arranged at the right time, everything goes smooth. So they don't want to bother. They, they don't want to get involved. 
it's a, it has to be a seamless procedure at the destination. And last but not least, at the destination, they really want to experience something nice. And this is where it's something not which is available on, I don't know, Expedia, Booking, Get Your Guide. It's something really unique, right? Something not traditional. And here, on this memorial moments, uh, memorable moments um, category, this is where we as local Bini, next slide, please, where we as local Bini could potentially help you as a travel agent. And before we talk about local Bini, um, our team, they created an amazing, well, I hope it's amazing, video for you. It's shown today, first time in public. So could we maybe move to the next slide and show the video? And then I'm going to tell you about local Bini. Travel is more about the people you meet than the places you see. I remember a few years ago, I was visiting my friend in Berlin. He took me on a personal tour showing his favorite places and inviting me to his crazy friends. And I thought, that's a really great way to experience places from a unique insider perspective to travel like a local and to make great friends along the way. So I thought, this is an opportunity. So I wrote down the whole idea of a new innovative service connecting travelers with locals. And people think that in a startup business, the idea is the most important. And that's partially true. You need persistence, you need a great team, and we have it. And right now, it's all about you. You as a traveler, you as a person who wants to experience something extraordinary, we have the right product for you. And together with you, our vision is to make everybody's lives more exciting, more experiential, and to bring joy to everybody's life. So let's work together. Thanks to our cooperation, we as Lokabini, we can fulfill people's journeys with stories, friends, and exceptional experiences delivered by locals. But the most important is that I'm really happy now. Local Bini can do business and Local Bini can help people travel in a new exciting way. All right. So what is Local Bini? Who is Local Bini? Local Bini is the European go to platform for city experiences provided by local people. We are headquartered, our commercial headquarters is in St. Gallen, Switzerland. We are a team of uh, seven team members. Oops, ah, exactly. And um, what kind of, a lot of people ask us so, what kind of experiences do you have there? And we have actually experience categories. So it could be history, art, discovery could be nightlife, and those experiences are provided by students, people 50 plus who are not working full-time anymore, but would be happy to share their passion about their city with others. So for each of those categories, we are working basically with, for example, for the history experience, it's a history teacher or a history student that are doing those experiences. Price-wise, it's very fair for the end customer. Let's say you would discover the local art scene. I think this is, I don't remember which country it was. Um, it's 25 euros per person for two people. If it would be six, uh, six people, it would be 11 euros per person. So pricing wise, it's very fair. Um, it could also be, ah, oh, we have a very cool experience uh, in, uh, in Paris. Uh, okay, you go to Paris, what do you see? You see the main sites, you see the Eiffel Tower. If you go the second time to Paris, maybe you want to see the Eiffel Tower again. If you go the third time to Paris, you want to see the Eiffel Tower again? Maybe, but you could also do something different. Uh, you could book an experience, a fashion experience with a fashion student. So you go for a three hour fashion consultation. She tells you how to match your look with your eyes, with your, with your hair. If you want to look thinner, you want to look bigger, if you, how you, if you want to be looking in a conservative way, if you want to look more trendy, it's amazing. And the thing is, we also test the experiences, so we, I can actually really say um, how good they are, and they are good. All right, next slide, please. And we are, for the moment, in 
60, actually more than 60 destinations in Europe. We are in every single European Union country. And we are still expanding. We have right now actually almost 1,000 experiences across those destinations. And yeah, more coming up soon. Um, next slide, please. So, okay, now it's the collaboration slide. Um, so if you're a travel agent and you think that could be something nice for your guests, um, this is how we would work. So basically, obviously, you would get 50% of our commission because on every transaction from the local, we, we, get, we take a cut. And you get 50% of this cut if you generate a booking. And then on the technical side, you would receive referral links. That means if you would send an email to your, to your customers or put it on the website, everyone who clicks on this and makes a conversion, trans uh, makes a booking, uh, we can track it back to you because this referral link is basically unique to you. And the second thing is you would have a partner login to our website. And in fact, most of the transactions happen via this partner login because when you send the email to the guest, hey, check what's available in Rome, the guests, they want to save time. They select it and tell you, hey, can you please book, please book this experience? So they don't really bother booking it themselves. And so basically then in your login, you have uh, the entire transaction history, what you booked, etc. cetera. So um, yeah, that's, that's basically it. And uh, if you go to the next slide, please. Uh, so what would be the next steps? You basically uh, get in touch with us. Uh, I will be also after the presentation here in the lounge. Uh, we would define basically what kind of access you want. Obviously, you have access to all our experiences, but keep in mind that, I mean, for example, we also work with hotels. So some hotels tell us um, we have guests they would like to have pony riding. So actually, we make this happen because then there is a, like a professional services category for the partner and they can book additional things like pony riding or other things. So this can be still customized to what you think, what your guests, uh, clients want. And um, yes, and then usually within two weeks, you get the partner login, you get the referral links and um, you get all the visuals from us for free so that you can basically use them for, uh, for promoting the local experiences. All right, uh, we've got to the next slide. Yes, so um, thank you very much for listening. Thanks for coming. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask now or later uh, in the lounge. Yes, you have one question. Do we have, we have a microphone so that everyone can? Hello? Oh. Hello, thank you for your speech. Um, you, you told us you work with locals, right? So the locals are conducting the tours in the yes. different cities. So how is it about um, taxation and payment? I mean, like, if you're local and you get money for a service you provide, you, like in Vienna, is it like you have to be a tour guide anyway? Other way, it's illegal. So if you're doing tours without having a license, then you break the local law. And actually, you have to pay also taxes and you have to have a license, so. OK. Uh, thank you for your question. It's a very, very good question. It depends really on the country. Um, like, for example, in Germany, if you're a student, you have a certain limit where you can just work without taxation. And um, so basically, in every country, we, uh, um, there are two ways. Like, in Switzerland, what we did, because obviously we are from Switzerland, we approached the authorities and ex explained them we have this concept in the sharing economy. How would they, what's their evaluation? So we have an agreement, a ruling with the authorities in Switzerland on how they deal with local BNE in Switzerland for all people offering experiences. And for example, in Switzerland, there is a threshold. If, you, if the local earns more than 2,000 a year, he would need to like, declare himself and pay social insurance charges, etc. So we, in our own process, we are tracking how much each local earns. And then we are notifying them before they actually reach this limit. So that, not that they have you know, a hassle of administration. But if they are OK, then obviously they need to register themselves. And obviously, we try to adapt this approach also to other, to other countries. But um, with, uh, for example, in Italy, it's very strict. Because in, if you, you can, for example, in Italy, you have to be an official guy to go to a museum and show around. Um, if it is a group, ah, I didn't tell you this. Ah, OK. Um, so we actually, because we work with travel agencies, we, actually, uh, we also have a lot of group requests. And if it is more than like eight or 10 people, um, we don't really want to send a student to deal with such a, a huge group. So in, terms, in, in order to ensure this quality standard on our platform, we then actually go back to official guides and they conduct this big, this, uh, the, the experience of the group. And then you may ask, yeah, but if it is a foodie or nightlife experience, um, then it would not work because the official guides, they don't do this. But 
at the group request, they usually come for traditional experiences like history walk, uh, visit the old town. So it's rather standardized um, tours. And obviously, in this case, we can get back, we can go back to the certifi certified local guides and uh, work with them for the group request. But to be honest, I mean, we never had an issue. And obviously, it's, I, I fully agree. Uh, in, in, in Italy, if you're a, a local, if you're a student, and if you go with a, I don't know, with a young couple to a museum and show them around, if you get caught, then they are in trouble. And they are in trouble, full, of course. But uh, I mean, you can say it's your friends, right? I mean, I mean, I mean, the thing is, what can we do, right? I mean. Uh, we, I mean, you know, I'm super uh, pushing to try to, you know, to make changes in the, with the European Commission in terms of policy, sharing economy also, you know. I mean, ideally for us, because a lot of people ask me, hey, Mateusz, how do you ensure the availability and reliability? Well, obviously, we have a pool of people who can do the same experience. But for us, if, this would be, if it would be possible that we can employ in entire Europe all the people from Switzerland, we would, to be honest, we would even ha be happy to employ them. But it doesn't, it doesn't work with the current policy environment in the European Union, because if you want to employ someone in Italy, you need to have an entity in Italy, which is absolutely nonsense in a digital world. But this is another topic. It's a political discussion. Any other questions? Otherwise, I'll be there. And uh, yeah, enjoy the afternoon or your lunch. Good? Super, thanks.